Beloved, welcome back to episode four of building an affordable or building your own affordable home. Now, a lot of people have taken me to task in the comments that affordable and Wrangler Star should not be mentioned in the same sentence. And I get that, but we're past the age of opulence and we've all had to tighten our belts and we're really getting down to brass tacks. And here's the reality, unless you wanna live in your car, or rent something, then we're all gonna have to downsize. The days of the McMansion and, and the boomer extravagance, I think that is far behind us, and we're gonna need to get back to more what was in line with our the post-World War II generation, my grandfather's generation. So that's kind of what we're keeping in mind when we're doing this. So let me catch you up with what we've done, and today we've got exciting news. In the previous episodes, we cut the foundation, and last time we built the timber-framed power base that we're going to be putting in today but more important than that we have water check it out we just got our meter base set this is actually better than a well because we are very blessed to live in an area where that we have a gravity feed small municipal water department this is untreated no chemicals no fluoride no nonsense straight down out of mount fuji it has its own pressure so when we lose power we have water all the time it is really the ultimate water supply so that's why we're not drilling a well out here you see beloved this is the government's biggest nightmare where its people or its subjects have autonomy where they can't shut off your power they can't shut off your water they can't shut off your food and control you that's a threat to them so that's what makes this so special you know, I was talking to the water guy and he was telling me that they're even pressured to put smart meters on private wells out in the country now. And it's because they want control. They want to be able to, if you don't do what they say, or you don't tow the line, or you don't meet the social credit score, they want to be able from a computer remotely someplace, turn you off, cut off all your resources until you bend the knee. That's why this is so important. This is why you have to get out into the country. This is why you have to be energy independent. Now, it's hard to do. You can't do it all at once. I'm not there yet either. I rely on the grid, but it's, an, it's a step-by-step, -step, taking steps and direction in that direction of getting yourself in a position where you can't just have somebody somewhere with a computer end your life. All right, political rant over. Let's get back to doing what I actually do know something about, which is digging holes. My mom told me, because I didn't, I, I didn't do very well in school. That might be a surprise to you. <laughs> it might not. She told me that because I didn't do well in public school that someday I'd be digging ditches. And boy, she was right. <laughs> but she was wrong too. I'm forced to work with sissy mittens today this is what east coast man he wears because my hands are so torn up from that motorcycle ride all right let's check our grade a couple of questions that keep coming up one is how come we're building the log cabin so close to the road well this is actually a small lot that i bought that's it that shares a property line with our with our our land I bought it because I didn't want someone else building here and the way I see it is the way that the world is changing. My legacy, one of the most important things that I can do in life is to leave my children with a piece of land and a home paid for so that they can get ev have every advantage and get a start in life because it's going to be hard to do. So say what you will, you may disagree, you, you know a lot of the, the, the boomer mentality and I had this for a long time was that when my 18 year old son, Jack, when he was 18, it was time for him to go make his way, right or wrong, if he was prepared or not. But I've had a real change of heart when it comes to, when I see the disadvantage that young people have compared to the advantages that even I had growing up, things were so much easier. So I'm not about that anymore. I think not to coddle kids, but I think that a family needs to work together to do whatever they have to do to support them and get them the best start in life. There goes the manure spreader. Sometimes when I see those hardworking dairymen go by in their tractors or I'm inside my house having dinner and I see they're out working with their tractors until 10 o'clock at night, I feel a little guilty for this foolishness of running around here making YouTube videos. <laughs> but not so much that I'd want to trade places, but I, uh, I gain, I guess I get solace from the 20 years I spent in the trades. And I know, I know what it's like. I've been there. Goodness, I am sore today. <laughs> I feel like the Tin Man. I, uh, I have to admit, I didn't dig this hole, nor did I dig that hole. 
my manservant, Mr. Dry, came out and I said, hey, can you be my stuntman today? I'm going to take credit for all of your hard work <laughs> in, the, in the video. So he agreed to that. But I got to come clean. He dug all these. I'm just doing the last bit. We call this Hollywood movie magic. I don't know if I'm going to get much deeper than that. I think I maybe on top of a the one and only boulder I've ever come across. That'll do though, that's perfect actually. I'll just bring the other one up to this grade and we'll set. If you place a little drain rock at the bottom of your hole, it will help drain the water away from the wood post, making it last longer. These holes are two foot deep. We'll set the grade here and then match the other one to this. A couple of the pros asked if I could explain the mysteries of the grade rod. What you have here, you've got a laser on a tripod that is throwing out a perfectly flat laser beam, invisible. And this is a receiver, this is an electronic eye. So if you hear the beeps, there's th three tones. So a solid tone means it's perfect. Now if you're high, you get an arrow that tells you you need to go down, and then as you get closer, the tone will change from high speed, and then you get a bar to perfect grade. If you go too deep, you get the, the low tone. Hopefully our joinery comes apart. When it rains, it gets wet, joinery can swell. Mr. Dry, would you like to mix some mud? I want to mix it. My manservant, Mr. Dry, asked me if I wanted to just pour it in, the concrete in dry or mix it, which there's nothing wrong with pouring it in dry, it'll eventually soak up moisture from the ground and harden. I told him, we'll mix it. It's not worth the pain in the comment section I'll have to deal with if I dry sack it. Let's see how we did. Eh, we're a little bit low on the west post. All right, let's throw in a little bit more gravel. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. There goes the power guy. He just got me all squared away on what I need to do. He gave me this big roll of red. This is direct bury caution tape. What you do, so when you put utilities in, you bury them and then you leave 12 inches from the surface from finished grade, then you lay this tape in there and then you bury this tape. So if anyone starts digging, they grab this tape and it tells you caution, there's a buried line underneath of it. So this is a really good thing. I think the power meter guy was impressed with Proho's power base meter stand. I'll use these uh, four inch timber screws to secure. That is a nice drill.
I'll tell you, beloved, if those black timber screws on that red dug fir doesn't give you the fizz centered, I don't know what does. My goodness, that looks good. The details matter, gentlemen. The details are everything. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. That's what the good book says. That you honor God by doing excellent work. And I don't want to say that it's got to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're all on different skill levels. It just has to be the best of your ability. Goodness, I don't know where this janky wheelbarrow came from. <laughs> Looks like something all manner of unclean and hateful bird drugging. This is like a one-bag wheelbarrow. Very flimsy. I think a Pendleton wool blanket is one of the pleasures of life. You're doing a good job over there, Mr. Jiraiya. Let's check how we did. There you go. Now you can see why I did the mortises in the top. We will be able to receive the two by six and this will be the strong ridge for the roof, which will have like a one foot overhang and protect those nice electrical panels in that meter base. And it'll just look nice. And I, I think you should put a roof on them. It, I, I, I've seen a lot of these built haphazardly and like, why would you do that? You've got to look at that, at it it's sitting in, the, in your yard and you build something that looks industrial or like trash, it doesn't make sense. So take some time, get some nice wood material, build it and put a roof on it, make it look nice. So that you, when you look at it, that you, it pleases you. Well, beloved, that's all the time we have for today. Tomorrow we'll pick up. We will be installing a yard hydrant, a frost free hydrant. I'll show you how to do that. We'll uh, do that all together and we will have water on site, which is a pretty, a pretty big accomplishment when you're dealing with raw land. It really, really is. However you get it, it's always a struggle. This is actually quite easy, but I've had it the hard way as well. But join us for that and uh, may God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers and we'll see you all on the next video.